I, I've never ever reviewed or gone through a string library like this. It's absolutely bonkers. This really is for the pro, the person who demands it all, who needs it all. Hyper Iron Strings Ensemble is a mammoth of a product. Priced at $549, full price, $449 currently, and I do have a 5% discount code in my description. But this is no light product. This is Sound Iron's flagship string library, and in this video, I've tried to keep everything as concise as possible. I've changed up how I usually do it just to fit as much information and samples in it as possible. So you can really make the decision if this product is for you. It's not going to be for everybody, especially at this price point. And one thing I'm kind of disappointed with off the bat, I'm going to say it, is the fact it requires the full version of contact, especially at this price tag, I'd expect it to work within the contact player. Now, the lighter versions of this product, the Hyper Iron Strings Elements and Micro priced at $99 and $49, a lot more for everybody, those products. They're great string libraries. I highly recommend them. Those both work within the contact player. But this requires the full version of contact. That's the first thing I'm going to say off the bat, and that's going to put off a lot of people because on top of that price, you also need contact. Um, but as I said, this isn't for everybody. You do have the full string section of the orchestra, and it did take them, I think it was like eight years to make this product. So you're getting first violins, second violins, your violas, your cellos, and your double basses. Full ensembles, this is not a solo library. And I think, as I said at the beginning of the video, the amount of articulations you're getting is ridiculous. You're getting four mic positions, and there's a load of other little features that I really, really like about this library. So how this video is going to work. First, I'm gonna introduce you to the product. We're gonna have a quick look at the UI. Now, because there are so many articulations with this library, so many that honestly you can't fit them all in one video, realistically, we'll go through every single one for the first five violins and then we'll go through your general ones for the other uh, instruments so at least you'll get a general gist of the sounds and the extra little bits and bobs with the first violin but of course we will go through the bread and butter the everyday patches as well with the other instruments after we go through the articulations we're going to look at the mic positions so we'll have a little play with those, see what the differences are, see if they're actually good mic positions. And then finally, we'll go over some features that I really enjoy, that I really like. And then last but not least, I'll give uh, my overall opinion on what I think about this library and whether or not uh, you should get it. I might give you some alternative products as well that I would recommend that are similar uh, to this or similar in price tag. So without further ado, Let's jump in. Now, I will mention this is 139 gigabytes. It's a lot of space, but for this price tag, you expect a lot of samples. So you can read the paperwork. Highly recommend reading the manual as well. There's lots of little things in here that might take you by surprise. Now, jumping into the product itself, this is how it looks when you open it up. Well, at least the master version. If I can quickly flick on the screen all the different folders it comes with uh, as well. So close, stage, mid, far, multi, mic. That's kind of the ones I stick with. You've got some templates as well and some ambience. Uh, as I said, I stick with the multi mic personally because it's all there. So you've got your first violin, second violins, violas, cellos, basses, and then ensemble patches, which is nice. I like how Signed Iron creeps those in as well, and you can kind of mix and do quite a bit with those as well. Um, so mixing all the different string instruments together. Within them, they have the legatos, the longs, the shorts, expression effects, and master. I am mostly going to be having the master open and then hand picking articulations. You do have your individual mics. As I said, I kind of stick with the multi mic because you can mix it yourself. The UI. Now, this is one I've already curated uh, because you can just click on it, drop down, and here is your host of articulations. Honestly, it's absolutely ridiculous. I could even fit all of them on the screen here. I'm going to have to change them as we go through. You have everything from sustains, bow changes, staccato, spiccatos, long staccatos. You're getting three different types of short staccato y 
matches. Uh, you have pizzicato, flautando, ponticello, trills, multiple types of trills. There's like a short tremolo as well. I've never really seen that. Silent sustain, bridge sustain, harmonic sustain. <laughs> Well, I mean it when I say this has every articulation you're ever going to really need with strings and more. Uh, ricochet, one, two, and three. Tuning, why do we need that? We have it. Cluster sustains, cluster slides, skitter, cluster tremolo, cluster sordino, flautando, collegno, harmonic staccato, bridge staccato. The, the list is just endless. Run up, finger, minor, run down, finger, minor. Like, <laughs> it's ridiculous how many articulations you're getting. But another way of doing this, you can go into the edit mode, and which is that little button up there, and flick through. You've got your stay in shorts, expressions, and effects. And again, you could just see how many articulations, just stuff, content is in this library, and simply select the ones you want there and back out of that, and you'll see it's loaded there as well. You have a fake vibrato up there. I will add, for some reason, it if you want a fake vibrato, but within the actual sustains, you do have actually a vibrato patch itself, but you do have this bottom bit where you can go between clean, vib, and then blend that there as well. Response, you can make that a little bit quicker. They have this lovely A, B sort of feature, which I'll demonstrate later in the video. This is just an overview, um, but that's kind of this page. Uh, oh, very important, this. I absolutely love this little feature here. So, full range. nice dynamic swell but almost if we want to tune that a little bit better and that's where i really love this product well if we put it at max you'll notice the lower is a little bit louder but it's still pianissimo but just a little bit louder if we put it all the way at the bottom It goes from silent and so you can go from loud to complete silence not complete silence to loud uh, and it just expands your dynamic range as it were so you can go from silent uh, so i really like the fact that you can you can kind of see it with the color as well it just modifies the dynamic fader a little bit there and so that's really handy really nice feature and the fact that it's there just makes a lot of sense and just adds a little bit more to the dynamic wheel. I absolutely love that feature. I will mention that off about there. Of course, release, release volume, tack, offset, your usual bits and bobs there. Uh, I love the space editor they kind of always use. I kind of wish they joined this with the mixer here. This is your mic positions, your individual mic positions is right at the end. I kind of wish they mixed that with the space base so that you could just move this around and it would just the mic positions accordingly they haven't done that um this is your reverb and panning uh, so you might want to just turn that off uh, and mess with your mic positions down to the individual but yes mic positions there not my favorite layout for mic positions as i said i really wish they would have done something with that but alas here it is four different ones we will look at those later there's an arpeggiator play assist, kind of the usual stuff you find with the sound iron hyper iron series. Um, so nothing out of the ordinary there. Now, I believe without further ado, it is time to jump into the mammoth amount of articulations that we have. And I'll leave time markers at the bottom so you can jump between sections of the video. Um, we will be skipping over. They've kind of split them up. I I personally don't like the fact that they do this, but you have sustains pianissimo, sustains forte, they split it all up. But what I am gonna be doing is just the dynamic ones essentially, because these are within the dynamic ones, so it does make sense for me to go over them because you are hearing them with the dynamic ones. I'm blabbering, let's jump in.
I feel like I've just run a marathon <laughs> or played a concert. Honestly, I <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> I, I've never, ever reviewed or gone through a string library like this with just so many articulations. You're never going to need another string library. Honestly, I, we haven't even touched the mic positions yet. I'm just commenting. But all the others, I did the, the, the essentials and then one odd one here or there. But I, it's just there's so much content and there's some absolutely stunning and amazing articulations. I will add some articulations are missing from certain instruments. For example, the bass does not have the flautando. The violin first legato also has a, a sordino legato, while the majority of them just have the sustain, the general legato. Uh, and as I said, there's the odd one here or there where there's not quite as many. I think the one with the most actually is the first violin. So I'm kind of glad I went through all of them. And uh, the ricochets as well. Absolutely love the ricochets on the first violin. There's three different types, but on the second violin, there's only one type. So there are some little discrepancies and also with the effects, I've noticed as well, you hit it when you come off, there's almost the sustain, or sorry, the staccato, um, note, which I guess can be useful because it's like, oh, it's off, it's done. But if you don't want that, I think you've got a mescus at the bottom. There's like a sink, there's a tight, there's a variation. And so you might have to pick a certain one for that not to happen. But I did notice some, uh, I wouldn't say oddities, but just little bits that uh, I think just you've got to press the right setting to get what you want. But overall, <laughs> I, I've never, ever reviewed or gone through a string library like this with just so many articulations you're never going to need another string library honestly I, we haven't even touched the mic positions yet i'm just commenting on the articulations but for the price tag so far i think it's well worth it you won't need another string library the quality is definitely there and the quantity is more than that. I, honestly, for what I'm seeing, I would almost expect double the price that you're actually paying. So you will not be disappointed with the quantity that you have with this library. That being said, let's move on to the mic positions. I really want to review these now. And we're going to use the cello for the purpose of this demonstration. Now, staccato. I want a spiccato. Okay, we've got a spiccato batch. Let's listen and make sure, I should say, that's on velocity sensitive. And I want to hear each different one. So stage and far are the automatic ones on. Let's turn those off. I just want to listen. Does it not let me turn it completely up? Kind of like that, actually. It doesn't let you completely turn it all off. Hmm. 
Right, this is just the close. There's reverb on that, I can hear it. No thank you. That is close and intimate. Love it. That's brilliant. That's a close mic. That's how I want a close mic to sound. And I do like the fact that I can't completely turn everything off so you don't accidentally turn it all off, go and say, what's wrong with it? Good touch. Stage. I like how they've already panned it in the position it's supposed to be in as well. That is where the cello sit on the stage, so. So that's the stage. Yeah, it's just that little bit further away, but they're honest. Okay, mid. Okay, if I center stage and see what happens. Yeah, it is slightly further away. I'm hearing the space, good, far. I'm expecting this to be quite far. That's exactly how I like my mic positions. They all have their own unique sound. The close is close and intimate. The stage is that a little bit further. Mid is definitely mid, add a little reverb if you want. Far is far away. They are four unique mic positions. They sound how they should. You have that reverb there to add if you feel like it as well and you can position it within the stereo field. Brilliant, they've done an excellent job in the mic positions. Very happy with that and it's minus 12 dB. So if you really wanted to, Actually, what's that sort of sound like? Oh, that's nice, actually. But if you wanted to, you can literally turn that right up. Perfect. I'm impressed. I love that. Absolutely love that. Let's change that to Pizzicato. You are peeking it a little bit there. But really, this just gives you so much flexibility with the library. You can apply this to so many situations. The mic positions just opens you up to a world of possibilities. Absolutely love this library. I'm honestly, <laughs> it's outstanding. Great mic positions, we've looked at those. So another cool feature of this library is this A, B fader. So you can set, uh, for example, the tremolo to B, the sustain to A, and fade from one into the other. Now there is something you have to do beforehand, otherwise it won't work. For example, if I set uh, my sustain to A and tremolo to B, and then assign this uh, to a MIDI CC on my keyboard, now watch what happens, it should go from the sustain to the tremolo. It doesn't, it goes from <laughs> sustained to absolute quiet, but you can see that that is going from A to B. I need to enable the other track. Now it's not a shift click, you actually have to assign them both to the same uh, key switch. So first I'm gonna click uh, that button there to assign a key switch. I'm just gonna go for C0, assign that to C0 as well, and now they're both enabled. It is in the manual um, if you want to go in depth, it does do a whole thing about A-B layering, but that essentially is how you easily do it. So now if we um, play it, if we start with our sustain. You get that nice little crossfade. I, I really do like that feature, especially with some of these effects. There's so much you could do. For example, if I go into the tuning, absolutely love the, the tuning sound on this. There's even some little chat in the background and it is sign that to B. Of course, we've got to do a key switch as well down there. Hopefully that doesn't interrupt anything else. And then go from A to B again.
you can create some very interesting effects, especially for the more horoscope or landscape sort of sounds. This library has such a flexibility with the articulations that you have available, as well as the little features like this to just add a little bit more flair to make it a bit different to your music. So that's another feature I really like. <laughs> Generally, I will not use this vibrato over here. It doesn't sound very good. It's artificial. There's the switches down here. Always look down here, especially with most sound iron libraries. Look down in this bottom corner and you will see uh, the multitude of things that you can do. I love the fact that you can change how tight or loose uh, your staccato are with a click of a button instead of a knob for tightness. I'm not the biggest fan of the um, slider or knob for how tight something is. Um, that sounds a bit bad, uh, but I know Spitfire do that a lot. I really like the fact that you just have these choices, these off and on buttons. That could just be personal preference though. Right, let's move into the ensemble patch. This is where you can get extremely creative. There's three specific ones they give you in the folder, long shorts and expressions. I've just picked the short ones for now and you'll notice we have an added bit down here at the bottom. We have an ensemble. You have basses, cellos, violas and violins of course. You can't change these out, they're just is what it is but you do have the mixer to change up the mic positions for these and you can change and affect the range that each one is playing and i love that feature about uh sound irons ensemble patches they're always very versatile and they are some of my favorite ensemble patches normally i stick away from them but having the option is always nice so we're just going to leave it how it is i am going to put the close mic on and get rid of the stage and maybe put the mid on instead absolutely love this spatialization the way they do this the fact that i can place them however you want in the space so that's really cool so you can hear me moving it closer further and that affects the reverb you can change the space as well there personally i like sticking with the mic position so i'll be more in this window for a more authentic sound than this but this is a nice option open to you of course there's uh, different effects equalizer filter and compression if you want to add that to it um, but this is an ensemble patch let's try a loose So the option is that if you do want to bundle everything together into an ensemble or want something a little less a CPU and RAM heavy, though saying that it is 2.24 gigabytes there at the top. You also have this added ambience patch as well, uh, which you get some interesting articulations. For example, staccato stun honey. Probably not what you were expecting. Um, staccato doubt. Stumbling. And a whole lot more, a whole host of interesting reactor cycle and unique. Soundscapes. And again, you can edit the space it's in. There are no mic positions for this one, probably for obvious reasons. Um, but it's not just a string library, although that is the main focus. There are some added little ambiences and bits in the background for you to play with as well. Uh, so I call it a little bonus. But overall, I'm just speechless at how much content they've packed into this library. I've never played with or reviewed a library quite like this. Just the volume of articulations, there's something for everyone in every situation i love the four mic positions it's not overkill it's not 21 mic positions don't get me wrong i love bbc symphony orchestra uh, and the 21 mic positions but they packed a lot into the four mic positions and just the wealth 
of articulations that are with this library. This is a string library that you will never need another one for. And I know it's a hefty price, but you're definitely getting what you're paying for. And they spent eight years working on this. And I know it requires full contact, but I can almost forgive it for the amount that you're getting with it. It's just so much. The quality is there. The detail is there. It feels like a finished product. You can see the effort and work they've put into this and the little details like, like this thing here. I absolutely love this right here. And the ABE fader. I know they do that on a lot of products, but I actually see a great use for that in this library. The mic positions, I kind of wish they did a UI like this, but still the fact everything's on minus 12 bit, 12 B, DB, and you just get such a raw and rich sound and you can mix it how you want. Yeah, it might've been nice again to have a proximity knob as well, but still this is not for the everyday user. I highly recommend Micro and Elements and you do get a discount if you decide to upgrade to this down the road as well. It does mention that on the website. So maybe start out small. This really is for the pro, the person who demands it all, who needs it all, uh, who works professionally. This is definitely for the professional. Uh, th there's just so much to it. And I feel I've barely scratched the surface of this library. And I don't feel I will ever, uh, it'll take years actually to really wrap my head around absolutely everything this library can do for me. And I've never experienced a string of library quite like it. My hat goes off to the people at SoundEye for creating this because honestly, if Spitfire had done something like this, they'd probably charge you £1,500. <laughs> but they're charging a third of that and my hat goes off to them and I'm going to stop rambling because this video is as long as it is anyway and my cameras are screaming at me <laughs> um, but thank you so much for watching I hope this has been an insightful video if you want me to do a follow-up video on any particular feature please let me know but again thank you so much for watching I will see you in the next video oh my days That's a wrap. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. Wow.